right. Detective Consitus, you've been sworn now before you begin testifying. I just want to inquire. This uh, trial is being live streamed on the court's channel, and I wanted to inquire as to whether or not you have viewed any of the testimony or the trial proceedings before your testimony today. I have not. Okay. Thank you for that. Mr. Wood, you can inquire on direct. Thank you, Your Honor. Before I do, uh, just briefly, I met with the court and counsel yesterday about some logistics for Detective Consitus's testimony, and I spoke about having a, uh, a copy of his exhibits uh, with him. That copy right now is by my desk. I didn't want to put it up there until uh, court started, and so I'd ask uh, if the court and counsel are still all right with uh, those logistics that he be handed that box of exhibits. All right. Um, Mr. Pryor, I will note we did discuss that in a sidebar. There's a large volume of pages in these exhibits. And does the defense have any objection to those being available to the witness as we go through admissions of those exhibits? All right. Uh, there is no objection then. So, Mr. Wood, if you'd like to go ahead and provide the witness with those exhibits, uh, as each, though, is offered, just make sure to make a clear record of what's being proffered, and we'll go through whatever becomes admitted. Detective, can you state your name and spell your last name for the record? My name is Chuck Consitus. The last name spelling is K-U-N-S-A-I-T-I-S. What is your occupation? I'm employed as a police officer at the city of Rexburg. Uh, and what is your title? I'm a detective sergeant in the investigations division. How long have you been a detective? Since 2011. And what did you do prior to that? I was in the... Uh, patrol division and as a acting patrol supervisor at one point before moving to the investigations. Are you post certified? I am graduated post class 131. And what is post? It's uh, the police academy. And in your role as an officer, have you continued receiving training over the last uh, or during your career? Yes, I have. I've been, uh, education and training in uh, drug and narcotics investigations, uh, missing persons, death investigations, financial crimes. Detective, how did you become involved in the case regarding Tylee Ryan, JJ Vallow, uh, Tammy Daybell, and Chad Daybell? Uh, in November 27th of 2019, I was aware that uh, then detective from Masil, who's now a lieutenant, uh, he was uh, conducting surf, uh, search warrants at three different locations at the Rock Creek townhomes uh, at 565 Pioneer Road. I believe the apartment numbers were 174, 175, and 107. And did you aid in that search? I was not a part of the original uh, service of the warrants. I did show up on scene later in the afternoon and checked in with uh, Detective Hermosillo and asked if I could be of any assistance. On that day, did you obtain a search warrant for a storage unit? I did. Um, Detective Hermosillo had me walk through apartment 175 just to see if there's any evidentiary items of value that may have been missed. I located a uh, in the master bedroom of 175, which was the apartment that uh, Lori Vallow was currently living in. There was a printer in the bedroom and on the printer, there was an invoice for a storage unit uh, from the Self Storage Plus in Rexburg. And did you, so you obtained a, a warrant oh, yes, for I that? Yes, obtained a warrant unit. for uh, storage unit number uh, C52. And did you execute that warrant? I did. What did you find? There was, uh, and there was a medium sized unit, and there was only a, a bin 
uh, tote bin with some uh, items of like a baseball glove, some ice skates, some photo albums, and a couple of bicycles and a scooter. There wasn't a lot of content inside the uh, storage unit. All right. Detective, at any time in your investigation, did you uh, have occasion to write a warrant for a P.O. box in Sugar City, Idaho? I did. In late December of 2019, I got information from Gilbert Police Department in Arizona that uh, Lori Vallow had a uh, P.O. box in Sugar City, Idaho, just uh, outside of Rexburg. Um, and so you wrote a warrant for that? I did. Did you execute it? I did. What did you find in executing that warrant? There was a large uh, bundle of unopened mail, uh, approximately 100 pieces or so. They were uh, addressed to both Lori uh, Vallow and her then uh, husband, Charles Vallow, who was, was uh, deceased, uh, and her brother, Lori, uh, excuse me, Alex Cox. All right. And going through that, did you find anything of interest to your investigation? Yes, there were uh, several pieces of mail that were from financial institutions. There were cell phone bills. There were uh, letters from the IRS and Social Security Administration. And based on what you found, did you uh, obtain a warrant for any other mail? Yes. Around that same time, the owner of apartment 107 of the Rock Creek townhomes, I believe his name is Stephen Cruz. He had contacted the police department and said he, there was some event. Your Honor, I think it goes to the question of why he did what he did. I'm just, well, in terms of what he said specifically, I'll sustain the objection as hearsay. Okay. Uh, Detective, without saying what anybody else told you, did you write another warrant for mail? Yes, there was some abandoned mail that was turned into the police department from Department 107. Based on what you found uh, in those uh, warrants for the mail, did you serve any other warrants or subpoenas? Yes, we served uh, several warrants and subpoenas to uh, different financial institutions and um, the cellular device companies. What was, uh, you said financial records, correct? Yes. What was the purpose of obtaining financial records in your investigation? Well, in uh, we're, this is a, we're a missing person case, and so there's a lot of information you can glean from going through uh, financial records. It's not just how much money is in the account. You can look through the account to see if it's a regularly used account, if it's a business account, a savings account. Uh, you also get a kind of a peek into the life on how people spend their money, uh, if they're eating out a lot or if they or just paying bills, you can kind of get an understanding of how uh, people go about their daily lives. Detective, regarding Lori Vallow Daybell and Tylee Ryan, did you create a list of financial institutions upon which you served a warrant for aid in your testimony at, at this trial? I did. And did you do that in anticipation of testifying before this jury? Yes. Did you prepare that list to aid the jury in knowing which financial institutions you're speaking about uh, and to help them keep track of them? Yes. Do you believe that demonstrative list would so aid the jury? I do. Your Honor, I'd ask that the witness be handed a look at States Exhibit 62. All right. Is that one of the ones that's in the... Office? Yes. Okay. Detective, if you want to locate Exhibit 62... <laughs> Detective, do you recognize that? Um, yes, it's a financial account attribution list that I created. Is this the same demonstrative list that we were just speaking about? Yes. And is it a true and accurate representation of what you created? Yes. Your Honor, for demonstrative purposes, I'd ask that Exhibit 62 be entered into evidence. Any objection? 
And may I publish? Yes, Exhibit 62 is admitted. Detective, is there a pointer? Yes. There. Can you uh, walk the jury through the accounts that you are going to be talking about? Okay, so on, on this page, we're going to be, uh, or just specifically for uh, Lori Vallow, uh, Daybell, and Tylee Ryan. Uh, again, having served several uh, subpoenas and warrants, we're looking through everything. We were able to narrow it down to uh, these uh, particular accounts that are pertinent to the investigation. And, and I didn't realize that wasn't all showing. And so you had accounts for Tylee Ryan as well. Yes. All right. Would you like me to go over them briefly? Yes, or, please. Okay. So the top account there, it's a JP Chase bank. It's a joint account with Charles Vallow. And the number on the end right over here is just the account number, just the last four. There was another account uh, through JP Chase that was a joint account that Lori had with her, her daughter, uh, Tylee. There was an additional JP Morgan Chase account uh, that she shared with Charles Vallow. Uh, this was a another kind of a business account. And then we learned that there was a, a personal account through the uh, BBVA Compass account that Lori had created for herself. And then at a later time, she created a joint account with Tylee through the BBVA. And then the next uh, are credit cards. There's a Barclays Hawaiian credit card joint account that she, Lori Vallow shared with, uh, with Charles. And they were each issued a card, and you see Lori had a card, 6611, and Charles had a card, was uh, 0991. There's a, uh, a Barclays Bank account, a credit card, that we found that Alex, who was Lori's brother, uh, had, had opened up an account and actually had Lori on as a card holder. And you see that Alex had two cards, here and then Lori had a card in the last uh, four numbers and that card was 9259. We have an additional First Hawaiian Bank uh, account that Lori had. And the last uh, two we see here are Chase Southwest Air, the, the PFS marketing credit card. The PFS is a premier financial service. That was the uh, business account that um, Charles Vallow had. He was an owner. Uh, of a financial service. And then we had uh, the National Life Insurance of the Southwest. Lori had a policy that she took out for personal reasons for $2 million. And just below that, the Tyler Ryan uh, attributions, the same ones that were up on top under Lori's name, but we just put them under her name. So there's the JP Chase Morgan account, the 3918. This is an account she had while she was living in uh, Arizona before they moved to Idaho. And then Lori opened up an account uh, with Tylee when they got to, just before they moved to Idaho. And Tylee uh, was the, uh, she had a Jeep Wrangler that Charles Vallow uh, had purchased and Tylee was making payments on. So we created that there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Your Honor, I'd ask that the witness look at States Exhibit 63, and 63 has several subparts. Okay, make sure to identify those subparts then, and uh, Detective Concitus, you can locate that exhibit, please. Thank you. And Your Honor, I'd note for the record that 63 itself is a business record affidavit, uh, and so this, uh, this document comes in by way of stipulation. All right, exhibit 63 then. So give me a moment. We'll take a look at that also. All 
All right, so 63 is just the affidavit, not the attached records, which are subparts that are marked with letters in addition to 63. Is there any objection to the admission of 63, the affidavit? Very well, exhibit 63 is admitted. Thank you. Detective, can you look at, and may I, uh, Your Honor, my understanding is that once that's admitted, all parts of this exhibit are admitted, and may I publish those? Okay. And okay, so that would include then 63A through 63I. Okay, I've got through H. Maybe there's. We'll make sure we get a copy of that. Okay. And then well, does council have a copy of it? Okay. I have a courtesy copy up through 63H, but you're saying there's also an I? Yes. Okay. So exhibits 63A through I are also admitted then. Thank you. Detective, will you look at what's been marked as state's exhibit 63A? What is that? This is a electronic signature card for the account of the JP Chase Morgan, uh, the 0769 account. What is the significance of that account to your investigation? So we learned that this account was a, an everyday account that uh, both Charles and Lori uh, utilized while living in Arizona. Um, and we know that uh, with this account, this account uh, is specifically uh, interacts with uh, Tylee's joint account when they're moving monies, transferring monies from account to account. All right. Can you look at States Exhibit 63B? Do you know what that that document is? This is a sample monthly statement, excuse me, a sample of a monthly statements from the zero uh, seven six nine account from dating from June tenth through September, I believe, of twenty nineteen. And this is the account ending in zero seven six nine, correct? Correct. And did you review all the documents that came in with that? I did. Mr. Wood, on that projector, there is actually a light that I think will remove the shadow. I can have a uh, staff attorney assist you with that if you'd like. That'd be great. Thank you. Are there regular deposits into that account? There's no regular deposits into this account. They're very, they're not, they're sporadic at times. They're coming in, monies are being transferred into this account from the 0377 account. Uh, but as far as having like a regular paycheck, having a direct deposit or something to that effect, th there's nothing on uh, like that on these accounts. Mm -hmm. And just to clarify, this was at the jointly held account by Lori Vallow and Charles Vallow, correct? Correct. Detective, can you look, pull out what's been marked as States Exhibit 63C? What is that document? Uh, this is the uh, signature card uh, on the application for the account, uh, joint account for Lori Vallow and Tylee Ryan. Uh, 
the account that ends in 3918. And this is a JP Chase, Chase Morgan, Morgan account. And can you pull out what's been marked as 63D? What is that? This is a sampling of uh, monthly statements from Tylee's account from January of 2019 through, I believe, November of 2019 or October 2019. Okay. And was there anything significant about this document to you in your investigation? Yes, it uh, it shows uh, Tylee is very active on this account. She is um, spending money with her. Uh, uh, she is receiving death benefit stipends in this account from uh, her father who Joe Ryan, who passed away uh, April 3rd of 2018. So Tylee was receiving death benefits and the, the death benefits were regularly deposited into this account. And Tylee was uh, very active in this account. When you say active. Well, she was out spending money uh, on almost on a daily basis. She was going to convenience stores, gas stations, shopping centers, fast food. And, and you stated this is the account she was receiving her social security payments in. Correct. And were those monthly? They were. Uh, they appeared uh, towards the end of the month um, since uh, she first started receiving her benefits uh, June 14th of, of 2018. And they were regularly occurring into this account. And do you know month. how much she received? In 2019, she was receiving $1,859 uh, a month. Um, detective, as you go through these records, are you able to tell the difference between what I'm going to call a brick and mortar payment or store, like a physical location and online payments? Yes. Uh, probably the overwhelming majority of her spending habits occur in brick and mortar type establishments. And there are some online payments, but the it's, she's out spending money in physical places. Detective, can you look at State's Exhibit 63E? What is that document? This is the partial monthly statement showing from uh, August 23 of 2019 through September uh, 3rd of 2019 for Tylee's 3918 Chase Morgan account. And what is the significance of that document to your investigation? Well, it still shows uh, through August, uh, she is out actively spending money. And it also shows towards the end of the month, We look up on the screen here. So she's really active coming through here. And then when you get towards uh, the 1st of September, and these, I just want to make a clarification here on this outside row. That's the posting date. Inside on the statement, you'll see a date of 9 1. So it shows Tylee moving from Arizona, heading north. And this is the same time frame when they were moving to Idaho. And when you get down to the bottom of the page here, it shows that her last in-person use of a card was done in St. George, Utah on the 1st. There were two purchases at a McDonald's that day. And is St. George between oh, Rexburg and 
Maricopa County. Yes, I'm sorry. For those that um, take it for granted, I'm sorry. Uh, St. George is uh, one of the first cities you come to in Utah from you come up north out of Arizona as you're heading towards Idaho. Was there any record of any money being deposited into that account after that date shown, the last date shown on that record? No. So we had learned that in the middle of August, I believe it was August 16th, Lori, uh, Tylee's mom, had contacted Social Security and had stopped having the monthly stipends deposited into Tylee's account. And she then switched those monies to be deposited in to her own personal account, Lori's personal account from the BBVA. So there were no more funds coming into this account at all. Detective, can you look at what's been marked as States Exhibit 63F? What is that document? Uh, this is the checking summary for the date of September 20th, 2019 for Tylee's JP Chase account. And it's showing a $10.04 uh, balance. And then it shows right underneath on the beginning balance, it has an electronic withdrawal for the same $10.04, bringing the ending balance to zero. Uh, does it show where that money was transferred to? That money was transferred into uh, Lori's uh, 0769 account from the JB Chase. Was there anything significant about that transaction to you and your investigation? Yes, it, it Tylee had no more control over her monies in this account. And with the timeline that we had learned in this investigation of Tylee's last known sighting was between September 8th and September 9th. Uh, Lori was, uh, had closed out this account to, uh, there was no more use for it. Detective, can you look at what's been marked as States Exhibit 63G? And what is that document? This would be a, it's an online uh, administration tool for people who bank with uh, JP Chase Morgan. Uh, they're issued a personal identification number and they're allowed to go online and they can conduct their transactions. And this is the uh, page that indicates for Lori Vallow, um, it sets up with her personal uh, PIN number for the on Tylee's account. It shows that she can access Tylee's account. And so do did she and Tylee have separate uh, identifying numbers? They did. Are they on that page? They are. So if you look down to the middle of the page, well, we know it's Lori because she says Lori for style at iCloud.com right here. And it has Lori's name up here. But right here under personal ID and profile ID, it has a number. And the last uh, four numbers on that are the 5132. So that's the number that's associated with, with Lori. And is there a profile number for Tylee Ryan? There is. Can you point that out? So if you were to go two more pages into this document. You'll see Tylee's uh, name is highlighted up on top and it has Tylee's email right there. Uh, Tylee Ryan 24 at Gmail. And if you go down to the profile ID just underneath that, it has a, a number right here. And the last four on those are uh, 0212. 
And Detective, what's the significance of those identifying numbers? Uh, does it aid you in your investigation to know those? Sure. It's specific to the to the user. Uh, so we have a general I idea that it's the person who's logging in is using it, and it leaves a digital footprint so you can see where they're going and, and what they're doing within the banking of their account. So if, if Lori Vallow were to go online and make a change to that account, it would show that it was her by her identifying number. Is that accurate? Yes. And is the same accurate if Tylee Ryan were to go online and make a change? Uh, it would show her identifying number. Yes. Thank you. If you were to go to the next page, Um, this page here is dated September 20th. And as we previously uh, spoke to the account closing on the, on the 20th of September, if you look, if you could bring your, let's see. Okay. We're good. Right. No, bring it down just a little bit, please. There you go. Thank you. You'll see the profile ID number up here, the 5132 that's associated with Lori Vallow. And if you look to the bottom of the document, You'll see here on the left-hand side of the screen, you see the high school checking account belonging to Ty Lee, uh, the 3918, and you see money's being transferred to, and here's the $10.04 that just shows that Lori went in and accessed Tylee's account and then moved monies over into her 0769 account, making it a zero balance. And so just to clarify, Detective, you're able to verify that it was Lori that made that transaction by that identifying number. Correct. All right. And what was that date again? Uh, September 20th of 2019. Detective, can you look at what's been marked as States Exhibit 63H? This is a checking summary showing a zero balance on Tylee Ryan's 3918 JP Chase Bank. And what's the date on that? Or I should say, is there a date on that? Uh, I'm not seeing a date on it, but it would be for um, anything after September 20th. All right. And can you look at what's been marked as States Exhibit 63I. Sixty-three I is a signature card application page for JP Chase Morgan account for Charles Vallow and Lori Vallow uh, for the 0377 account. And did you obtain that through a warrant or subpoena? I did. Um, did you provide that to any other law enforcement agency to review? I did. I have some knowledge of this account, but I, uh, the primary reviewer of this account was the, was Michael Douglas, FBI forensic accountant. Mm -hmm. Detective, can you look at what's been marked as State's Exhibit 64A? Oh, Bailiff, I apologize. This was the first page to 63. And, Your Honor, I would just note for the record that uh, State's Exhibit 64 is a business records affidavit and that this document has subparts 64A through C. And to the state's understanding, this document comes in by way of stipulation. 
All right, so 64 is admitted and 64 A, B, and C are also all admitted. All right. And they may be published, Mr. Wood. Thank you. Detective, what is uh, what are the documents from states? Excuse me, Exhibit sixty four. These are summary of accounts uh, for the BBVA Compass account ending in three two two nine for Lori Vallow. It's a checking account that was opened in October of twenty eighteen. Is Lori Vallow the sole user on this account? She is. And I, I believe you just said it was opened in October of 2018? Correct. I believe the 20th. And did you obtain this through a search warrant or through a subpoena? I did. And what was the significance of this account to your investigation? Well, we learned through this account um, that this would be one of Lori's main accounts where she would be receiving future social security monies. We know that uh, Tally's monthly stipend was being deposited into this account and would later receive uh, stipends for death benefits for Charles Vallow as well for both her and JJ. And can you look at 64B? And what is that? Um, this is a sample portion of, of monthly statements for Lori's 3229 BBVA account from August of 2019 through, I believe, January of 2020. Detective, I want to call your attention to a deposit made on August 28th. Can you see that? I can. What was that deposit? And if you can use a pointer to point it out to the jury. So just below mid page on the screen here, we see a credit for social security treasury deposit for $1,859. Uh, this account is a, this deposit is associated to Tylee Ryan, and we know from when multiple deposits are made into a banking account uh, from Social Security. So if there's more than one person receiving monies, they're given special identifiers so you can see, see which deposits belong to which person. So if we look here at Tylee's, you see the reference, and it has the X's. And then we see the 4121C1. So the 4121 is the last four numbers of Joe Ryan's social security number. His social security number is one. And then the C1 is just a, a, a it's a designated uh, uh, identifier for child. So it'd be Tylee being a child, a minor under 18, receiving death benefits from uh, her biological father. Okay, and that was the Joe Ryan. You Joe Ryan, correct. Who you testified was deceased. He was deceased. He was, uh, he died on April 3rd in 2018. And so that's how you're able to identify that that, that payment is, a, is assigned to Tylee Ryan, even though it's going into Lori Ballow's account at this point. Correct. And from your investigation, is this the first deposit of Social Security benefits for Tylee Ryan into this account? Yes, this is the first deposit. And where was Tylee Ryan receiving her Social Security benefits before that? As stated, she was previously receiving them in her J.P. Chase account, which her mother has since closed out. And again, what was the date of that deposit? This was on October, uh, excuse me. August 28th of 2019. And was there anything significant about that to you, about that date? We learned that our investigation, we believe that Tylee was killed 10 days later.
I'm going to call your attention to a deposit made. It's on the third page of that document. A deposit made on September 18th. Are you able to locate that? I am. Uh, can you, with your pointer, identify the deposits made on September 18th? Yes. So there's two deposits made on that day, um, one in the amount of $3,902 and the second for $4,157. And you see them here towards the bottom of the page right here. Uh, they were deposits from the Social Security Administration, Treasury Department. Uh, did you see the X's here? You have a different last four number, the 9801, and then you have a C1. And then on the next line down, you have the 9801E. So we can differentiate what deposit belongs to by looking at this top one here. We have the 9801. So Charles Vallow's uh, Social Security number was uh, 4360298801. And we see the C1, so that would be for JJ. And that's the monies that were received. So we have the, and the next one down, we know it's for Lori because we have the 9801, but the letter E is just a, an identifier saying that she is the, the child in care or the guardian. All right. And are those, those amounts, are those the regular monthly payments? These are not. These are the, the initial installments that were, she received back pay for both when she generated her paperwork back in August. And detective, was there anything significant about that deposit date to you? Yes. What is that? JJ was killed a few days later. On or around the 22nd or 23rd. Detective, you mentioned earlier that this account, this BBVA account, ending in 3229, received from August on all of the Social Security payments. Yes. And you've re did you review this document for those payments? I did. Detective, did you prepare a chart, a demonstrative chart that shows all of Tylee Ryan's social security deposits? I did. Does that include both the JP Morgan account uh, and BBVA account payments? Yes. Did you do that to aid this jury in understanding where, where and when those payments were made? Yes. Uh, does it label the banks to which the deposits were made? It does. Did you prepare that in anticipation of testifying today? I did. Do you believe it would aid the jury in understanding the deposit history for Tylee Ryan's Social Security? Yes. Detective, can you look at State's Exhibit 84? Is that the document that we have been speaking about? Yes. Uh, and is that a true and accurate representation of the de demonstrative chart you created? Yes. Your Honor, I'd ask that for demonstrative purposes that States Exhibit 84 be entered into evidence. Any objection? All right, Exhibit 84 is admitted. May I publish? You may. Detective, can you walk the jury through that chart? Sure. This chart uh, depicts Tylee Ryan's Social Security benefits. Uh, it's the history of her timeline. So they're up in the upper left-hand corner, there's uh, three different colors on this legend. So the first one, the, the purple colored it's a Social Security benefit, was deposited into the joint J.P. Chase Morgan. So this was Tylee's first account, uh, the 3918. 
And then we have on the second one, we have the benefit amount deposited into Lori's own personal account after we believe Tylee was killed. And then we have one that has some hash marks on it. And that shows that it was deposited for that month. But since uh, Tylee was alive, we discount uh, both those months. But they're just showing that deposits were made. All right. And are there are there other dates on that chart? Yeah. So the on the first line we have the date of four three of eighteen. That's when Joe Ryan, Tylee's father, died, and then Tylee begins receiving benefits on the fourteenth of June. You see the large sum uh, there. That's she, it's for her back pay, if for lack of a better analysis. And then she starts receiving regular deposits of eighteen hundred dollars, and. Then when 2019 comes around, she gets a percentage increase. So that's why it's at $1,859. And then as we go towards the end of the middle, we see uh, on the screen here on uh, July 11th of 2019, this is the day that Charles Vallow was killed. And then the deposits keep going. And then on the 12th, uh, Lori contacted the... Uh, Social Security Administration to change Tylee's benefits. Uh, I think earlier I stated the uh, 16th, um, but it was the 12th, so I stand corrected on that. The deposits uh, for Tylee into the BBVA account now, uh, since she's no longer receiving them in the JP Morgan. And you see here on the 8th, that's the last proof of life we have for Tylee. We have uh, nothing in our investigation has shown that she is living after this this date. And then after, uh, for the month of October, uh, Lori's receiving Tylee's benefits directly into her, her personal account. And then as you see here on the bottom line here, on June 9th, we find Tylee at the defendant Chad Daybell's property. Detective, similar to that chart, did you make uh, a chart for J.J. Vallow's survivor benefits and Lori Vallow's mother, child, and care benefits? I did. Uh, did you make that in preparation for testifying today? Yes. And did you, uh, did you rely on the banking documents that you reviewed in making that chart? Yes. Can you look at States Exhibit 85? Is States Exhibit 85 the document, the, the chart for JJ we've been speaking of? Yes. And did you create that in anticipation of testifying before the jury? Yes. Do you believe it would aid the jury in understanding these, uh, these financial transactions? Yes. Your Honor, I would ask that for demonstrative purposes only that States Exhibit 85 be entered into evidence. Very well. No objection. So Exhibit 85 is admitted. And may I publish? You may. Detective, can you describe how you made that chart? Yes, this is uh, a chart depicting uh, JJ's and Lori's, or uh, JJ's Social Security uh, benefits that are going into uh, Lori's BBVA account. Again, the legend on the upper left shows the benefit amount deposited for JJ. Underneath that, you see the color for the amount deposited for Lori. And then the hash mark box shows, but it's not included in the, in the total amount of deposit because we believe JJ was alive for that month. So as we go through the chart here, uh, on as stated in July of uh, 2011, I'm sorry, July 11th of 2019, Charles Val was killed in Arizona. Lori applies for benefits in August and starts receiving benefits in September. And this is their first deposit. And as stated earlier, this is uh, not their regular deposit. It's uh, 
for the back pay when she generated her her paperwork for to receive the benefits. And then very next box we see on 923, that's our last proof of life for JJ. And then you see the benefits being deposited in. Uh, they each were receiving uh, $1,951 per month. So month they uh, received for September and then October. And then you look here on the last one. And then November 5th, this date is important to the investigation because that's the day that Lori Vallow uh, became Mrs. Daybell in Mary Chad in Hawaii. JJ is still receiving uh, benefits, as is Lori, all the way through to the end of the year and end of January. And then the last box, uh, we have the ninth when we found JJ on Mr. Daybell's property. And detective, uh, all of those, those social security payments was, was it your testimony? Those went into Lori's sole BBVA account. Correct. She had full control over it. Detective, can you review states or pull out states exhibit 65? In your honor, while he does that, states 65 come uh, The exhibit 65 itself is a business record affidavit with subparts A through D. Uh, where this has a business record affidavit, states understanding this comes in by way of stipulation. Mr. Pryor, any objection to 65? and subparts A through D. All right, uh, there is no objection then. To exhibit 65, the electronic business records affidavit is admitted. Exhibits 65A through D are also admitted. Thank you. Detective, what is State's Exhibit 65 in general? The entire exhibit is uh, dealing with uh, Tally Ryan's joint account that her mother opened for both of them to share for the BBVA. And they did that in August uh, 19th of 2019. All right. And... Can you look specifically at 65A? Are you familiar with that? Yes. What is that document? This is a summary of accounts. It's the signature uh, page for the application for the account of Tyler Ryan that ends in the last four numbers of 5794. And both her and Lori are signers on it. Okay. And that's through BBVA? Correct. When was this account opened? Uh, the 19th of um, August, 2019. Can you look at State's Exhibit 65B? What is that? This is a transaction history, monthly statement of activity on Tylee's account for the BBVA. And in your investigation, was there anything significant about this document? Um, yeah, two things. So one, that Tylee was not receiving any more deposits into this account from Social Security, where she was in uh, J.P. Chase Morgan. So any deposits that come into this account are now coming from her mother uh, through transactions within the bank. This particular uh, page we see was created on 819. And for the first couple of days, uh, as they are you know, traveling from Arizona on their move to Idaho, you see again where on out here we have the 
the the date of the transaction, but after nine, these post dates of nine three, it just shows that this card was used in person only three times, and that was during their move from Ida from Arizona to Idaho. They were at three different places. One was in Fillmore, Utah, which is in southern Utah, and it was uh, used at um, a convenience store. There was one that was used at a Maverick in Perry, Utah. Again, I believe that's still southern Utah. And then there was one that was used in the uh, Wiki Up, Arizona. I'm not familiar with geographically where that city is located in Arizona, but it was used on that date. Um, and from there, everything else that we've learned with this account was done online, with the exception of two more dates in one in September and one in October. All right. Can you look at States Exhibit 65C? And what is that document? This is uh, transaction history uh, for Tylee's account, the 5794 BBVA from August 2019, I believe through November of 2019. I'm sorry, it goes through January of 2020. Okay. And earlier we spoke about uh, on Tylee's JP Chase Morgan account about spending between brick and mortar stores and online payments. What's the general nature on this account? This activity is completely opposite of what Tali was using on her JP Chase account. Um, everything that all the activity on this account is is done online, with the exception of two dates. And you'll see on I believe September seventeenth, um, there was a transaction uh, where it was used in person at, Co at a Costa Vida Mexican restaurant. And then there was another in-person transaction on October 25th, I believe. Uh, that was, uh, I'm sorry, October 7th. And uh, we believe that Tali did not make those purchases in person. In the mic, please, Mr. Pryor. Judge, I'm going to object to that uh, characterization. It calls for speculation. I'll sustain the last part of the response there, striking the uh, belief Tylee did not make the purchases in person. There's no foundation for that, Mr. Wood. All right. I'll lay some foundation. Thank you. Uh, Detective, through your, through your investigation in this case, were you involved in the search for Tylee Ryan? Yes. And are you aware of... Uh, through that search uh, of a last known sighting of Tylee Ryan. Last known sight of, uh, sighting of Tylee Ryan, I believe was a photograph where she was in Yellowstone on the 8th of September, 2019. And so these purchases that were made after that date, uh, what was significant about those to you in this investigation? Uh, just complete opposite of anything that Tali was doing up until this point. Uh, she everything is done online in this account. The monies are coming in from Lori's account to her personal account. She would send money, make deposits into Tali's account, and then those monies would immediately be Venmoed out to we learned uh, Colby Ryan, uh, who is Lori's son. And you, you spoke about two um, brick-and-mortar purchases? Yes. And I, I believe you said they were both at Costa Vida? They were both at Costa Vida. All right. And ask you to look at States Exhibit 65D. Okay. And what is States Exhibit 65D? Um, states, uh, the exhibit is a, a copy of the receipt that I obtained for a purchase with Tylee's account 
on the 17th of September of 2019. All right. It was an in-person purchase. And on the third page of State's Exhibit 65D, what is that? This is a Costa Vida receipt dated October 7th, uh, 2019, that was used with uh, Tylee's card associated with this account for an in-person purchase. And so to clarify, Kylie in that BBVA account, she she never received social security payments there. No. Detective, can you look at States Exhibit 66? Do you recognize States Exhibit 66? This is a uh, affidavit of uh, business records for Barclays Bank. Okay. And your honor, uh, for the record, this, uh, this exhibit does come in with the business records affidavit. It has subparts A through D. And with that business record, I believe it comes in by way of stipulation. As to Exhibit 66, any objection? And again, Judge, that was an agreement prior uh, that uh, this would be admitted by stipulation of the parties. Okay. Exhibit 66 has been offered and is admitted as well as the subparts 66A through D. Thank you. Detective, do you recognize States Exhibit 66A? This is a Barclay application, Barclay Bank application for credit card. And it is in the name of Lori Vallow. All right. Is anyone else's name on there? No. All right. Um, do you know when this was applied for? So the application date was uh, September 24th of 2015. And can you look at application 524-71125? This is the application for Barclays Bank credit card for Charles Vallow. And the application date is the same as the previous. All right. Thank you. And then application 55662600, what is that? This is a Barclays Bank application for a credit card in the name of Lori Vallow. The application date was uh, April 19th of 2016. So, so this was a joint credit card application, is that fair to say? Yes. Can you look at States Exhibit 66B? What is that? This is um, a monthly statement of transactions activity for the Barclays credit card belonging to Lori and Charles Bell. In your investigation, was there anything significant about the information you found on this page? Yes. Two things stand out. On the second line down for June 12th, we see a credit card payment to Valley of the Sun Mortuary in Chandler, Arizona. And this is the day after you recall Charles Valla was killed on uh, July 11th of 2019. And the second uh, date is all down to the most, the bottom of the page here. So on July 20th, we see an airline ticket purchase for Legion Air in the name of Chad Daybell. And the airfare was round trip from Provo, Utah the PVU is the uh, acronym for Provo. Uh, and the IWA is Phoenix Mesa. And then round trip back to Provo. 
you detect. You, I'm oh. sorry. Go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt. You see on this page here too that you have uh, purchase activity for Charles Vallow, and there is no transaction activity in July. And then you see that this card used by Lori Vallow that was issued to her uh, was responsible for these transactions. All right. And so the transaction for the e payment for airfare for Chad Daybell was what date? On July uh, 21st, it was the purchase date. The July 20th was the post date. And to your knowledge and investigation, was Chad Daybell married to Tammy Daybell at the time? He was. That was purchased. Yeah. Can you look at States Exhibit 66C? And what is that document? I have a Barclays MasterCard in the name of Alex Cox. And this is a monthly statement of transaction activity for this account. And you had mentioned earlier that Alex had an account that he shared with his sister, Lori. Is this that account? It is. How do you know that they shared it? They each were assigned uh, separate cards. All right. All right. Can you describe or is there anything else of significance on this document to your investigation? Yes, we have um, at the bottom of the page, we have airfare um, for Lori Vallow flying from Phoenix Mesa to Idaho Falls on a round trip. And that would be uh, September, uh, February 25th. And is the Idaho Falls Airport the nearest airport to Chad Daybell's residence? Yes. Was there anything else of note on this page or this document? On the no, on, on the next page. Okay. On this page, you're seeing uh, purchases in the month of March on the Alexander Cox, Lori Vallow shared credit card account. You see purchase activity for Lori, and you see her card that ends in the number 5259. Uh, there are um, three purchases that she makes uh, on this account that um, show that she bought airfare for Tylee Ryan, and Tylee's friend, Brianna Gill. And those purchases were made on March 13th and they were round trip from Phoenix to LIH, which is, I believe it's pronounced Lahui, Hawaii, on the island of Kauai. And then directly under that for March 14th, you see Lori using her card to pay for airfare for Chad Daybell, uh, flying from Idaho Falls round trip to Phoenix Mesa and back to Idaho Falls. And that was March 14th of? 2020, or sorry, 2019. And so Charles Vallow was still alive at that point, to your knowledge, correct? Correct. Did you find any indication that Charles Vallow had a card on this account? He did not. And then, Detective, would you look at States Exhibit 66D? What is that document? This is the application for a Barclays credit card in the name of Alex Cox, dated 926 of 2016. And was this associated with the account we were just speaking of? Yes. Is there anything of note on that document to your investigation? Oh. 
Are you talking about just this this, this particular page? Other just than, in that document. Is it just the? Um, it's just the account information for account information for Alex. Yes. Okay. 